Hello, everybody. Why, well, hello, I'm Kaylin. I'm Dr. Cynthia. This is Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast. Where we invite you to come for the chat and stay for the healing. Hey, Kaylin, how the heck are you? How's your brain after your uh, fender bender? You know, I am still in a fog. Aww. Actually, the funny thing is, speaking of that fog, I say you know a lot, and I just now that me just too. clicked with me. I'm like, mm. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> and now I'm going to be really thinking about it hard, but speaking of thinking about it, I, I am in a fog. Um, I just got done with a visit at urgent care. I saw them last week and I was like, I just, I can't think I it's, it's, I don't have time for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I usually think on my feet and I work fast and move. I have too many things to do that um i had a hard time coming up with like the words for a um like a script a a prescription because they're going to order an mri just to make sure you know they said everything's probably fine but it's been a week i still have a fog i still have a rough headache and yeah just words are at the tip of my tongue and i just can't get them out so you know in addition to the soreness and just being irritated about the inconvenience of things. Sorry about that. So ladies and gentlemen, part of, if there's any delays on her end, it could be buffering, could be post-concussive syndrome. (laughs) I was like both, both on the internet's behalf and my brain. (laughs) That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. It's buffering. I pause and my head's like, wait a minute. (laughs) You'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too bad for either. (laughs) And I was at a loss for words and she swears concussions aren't contagious. (laughs) (laughs) It might be, it might be. Oh, so darn it. Yep. We're getting through it though. So how's your car? What's going on with the, they did the, I, I say the first quote. So Thursday, they called me, they'd had it for a couple of days and the body shop called and said, you know, on initial inspection. So Luckily, I've not ever had to do this before, Mm -hmm. but they look at the car and they don't take anything apart. They just look at it and say, all right, this is what we need. This is how much it's going to cost. So he called me with that and it's like just under 6,000. It's like, yeah, it's a lot. Okay. And that's without them taking it apart. So he said it should take seven to 10 days to get parts. Once the parts he knows he needs Mm -hmm. come in, he'll disconnect, like disconnect. See, there's one of those word things. Um, he'll take apart <laughs> the car. If they need anything else, they'll order it. He'll update me. So, and then I guess today's Tuesday, tomorrow, the insurance company for the other side is supposed to, I don't know if they're going to the body shop or just going to do a video call, but I guess they have to assess the damages themselves. So we'll see how that goes. And well, I I'm, wish you the best of luck on uh-huh, that. And I hope uh-huh. the frame isn't bent because then that's me too. I don't want a car payment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She hit I am hard. on my third rental. Yeah. She hit me hard. Third okay. rental. Yes. What I did not. I will keep happened? this brief because people may not want to hear this <laughs> chatter. Third rental. First one expired tags. No expired did tags. You get pulled over. No, thank goodness. So I was, it was last Tuesday when we talked, Okay. I got home and I got out and and I thought the car smelled weird, but I, it had leather seats. I know (laughs) I, I was irritated, you know, I was like reinstalling car seat and not feeling good, you know? Mm -hmm. So it smelled weird, but I'm like, it might be the cleaner they used, or it's a hot day. It's got leather seats. I'll let it air out on the way home. We'll see. I get out of the car. I look at the rear tag, like license plate. It's expired tags. It's got 2021 tags. So not just a little expired, <laughs> like a lot Holy expired. Shit. Minimum seven months past due. Right. Let so- it a lot? <laughs> yes. So I called him. What? And I said, uh, I've got expired tags. He said, oh, it's okay. They, I forget what he said. They, there's a, I'm not going to say the right word again, but continuance, there's an extension, whatever. It's I not said, a seven and a half months extension, 20 no. days. <laughs> he said, well, if you have any problems or you get pulled over, just let me know. And I'm thinking, I don't want to get pulled over to let you know. So 
I just got off I'm the phone. I'm a responsible citizen. Right, right, right. You get pulled over for expired tags, even if you do nothing else wrong. I, I happen so, to know that. By <laughs> me too, unfortunately. I can speak from experience. So Dave got home and I said, hey, can you stick your head in that car? Like, make sure I put the car seat in right. I always have him double check me. And he's like, oh, it smells like smoke. I said, okay, I kind of thought that, but I, and you know, we don't smoke. So Hold it's it. going back. Are they're not supposed to smoke in no, rental cars, so. No, they have do not smoke stickers all over it. So I called him the next morning and I was like, look, I doesn't need to be done today. But expired I'm, tags. <laughs> I know, I know. Not only do I have expired tags, now we smell like smoke. It's got to be traded in. Okay. So we traded in for a Nissan Altima. It was a 2021. It was beautiful, actually. I loved it. Nice. Over the weekend, Dave goes, I think it's leaking oil. No joke, leaking oil, leaking oil. Don't know. So I called him yesterday because I said, I was going to call him anyway and say, I think it's leaking oil, but everything seems fine. Like Dave checked it and all that, but say, Hey, I just want to give you a heads up. You know, I uh -huh. think it might be leaking. But when I went to start the car, it had the like oil service required on it. I'm like, sure. you gotta be kidding me. So I called him. I was like, all right, it's leaking oil. He didn't even ask any questions. He's like, bring it back. We'll trade it out. So who, right when I got there, outfit? is this a name outfit? Uh -huh. Yeah. Is yeah. It... It's a pretty big one. It's got a green logo. I don't know if we should say or not, but you know, it's a pretty big one. And so I, I got had, back there. One of those two. <laughs> What's that? The starship had, um, yes, yes, yeah. it does. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> so because I, it's what I do. I, when there was stuff on the concrete, I took a like white tissue, right. And I uh -huh. dabbed at it. Uh -huh. So I go into the, <laughs> I go into the office. I was like, do you want to see what it looks like? He goes, I believe you. <laughs> I said, okay. And apparently he's, this is the second car that he's had issues with. And he thinks it's whoever's doing their oil change. I was like, all right, well, they might not need to do oil changes anymore. Yeah. Cause even if it's, um, if they don't, like tighten the cap. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Or, you know, but oil change, it's, that's not a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we got off on a tangent. I didn't plan on, but yeah, three cars later. So what do you have now? Uh, a Toyota RAV4, oh, which is now. much like my CRV. CRV so yeah. yeah, it's much better. Plus the other cars, I felt like a because I'm not feeling good, you know, aches and pains. I was like, man, this car sits low to the ground. And I'm like heaving yeah. myself in and out of it. So having something that sits up higher is better anyway. So yeah, you know, and it's just drove it. it. It is. And that's exactly what he said. He goes, okay. this is much more like what you had. I said, yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. So, well, yeah, they owe you the best thing on the lot, honestly. Well, yeah. I kind of wanted to be like, do you have anything new? Can I pick out what I want this time? <laughs> yeah. Where's the Lamborghinis? Right. Right. And oh, I no. Just, low to the ground. <laughs> I, you're, you're right. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. And I just got to the point where I was like, I'm just tired of complaining. Right. Right. I so feel like sorry. I can't my ground. So, you know, anyway, yeah. off on a tangent, I didn't plan on, but yeah, but that's what we do when you y'all come for Absolutely. the chat. Absolutely. There's no disclaimers on the chat. I mean, right, right. <laughs> it's a free service. So you get a little, yep. sometimes you just get to listen to us prattle on. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. They'll and, be like, get to um, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? If we stick to it long enough, maybe we'll get our own line of greeting cards. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. The old lady greeting cards. No, no, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've, <laughs> Oh, man. So I'm so sorry. And especially when you feel crappy and then you've yeah. got extra, yeah, you know, just the basics. I mean, yeah, you, you, yeah. you this is literally the rental car industries. You have one job, <laughs> right? <laughs> Poor kid. I think he cringed every time I, he picked up the phone. One I was job. like, it's just... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's not yeah. even like you're going to a vintage place, you know, nope. where you expect to have trouble. You like, no, oh. no. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, what you been doing? What you been working on? Well, you know me. I have. Um, 
I've got, did I tell you the name of my, um, sorry, people, I'm plugging in the power. I forgot. <laughs> and I don't want to run out. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. Um, <laughs> Did I tell you the name of the new acupuncturist that's joining the practice? I don't think so. <gasps> I don't know if you did or not. We might have talked about Her it, but name I mean, is Sarah Ted. Lee? Oh, I know. I think I think we may have talked about it. See, head. My yes, head. I mean she has a, a married last name, but it's Sarah Lee. <gasps> and her last name. It's gonna be name. so easy for everybody to remember. I'm so happy. <laughs> Just the, just the name just makes me happy. And then when I was at Target over the weekend and I bought her namesake bagels, it just. <laughs> she sent her a picture and say, hi. <laughs> I almost did. I almost mm -hmm. did. I wasn't, I wasn't quite prepared enough, but it just <laughs> gives me heart glitter. I had yeah. some Sarah Lee bagels and they were fabulous. So she's she coming in fun. next week, right? She starts next week. Yeah. And so in preparation, mm -hmm. I've been moving shit around the office and cleaning it up. And, and, um, recently a few months back, um, my storage unit was going to jack up my storage by another 70 bucks a month. Oof. And I was like, this is a great opportunity to go through all that shit, save that money Mm -hmm. And, um, so sometimes you have to pay money to save money. <laughs> yep. So I had to hire movers to move all the stuff. And, okay. um, I had a spacious 10 by 10 unit and I had a lot of file boxes, um, because, as a practitioner, you have to hold patient files for at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, somebody okay. wants to put new um, <laughs> software on my computer right in the middle of the podcast. Anyway, um, and so some of those, and I just haven't had time, haven't taken the time to go through like, what can I send to the shredder? What can I, um, so I just kept moving it around every time I moved here in California. And then I have some other stuff, you know, from the move that just didn't fit and mm -hmm. keepsakes and stuff from my kid when she was in school and um, some of her basketball stuff from her storied basketball career. Yeah. Um, but then also some of her stuff because when she moved to Australia to go get her master's degree, she put all her stuff in storage. And then I, as a responsible mom, moved her stuff in with my stuff so she mm -hmm. could save money. Yeah. So just tons of stuff. And um, I don't know, do other countries store as much shit as America does? That is a very good question. I know somebody can probably answer us i mean it's a huge industry and it's yeah it's painful to admit so this is the self-disclosure portion of this program mm -hmm. please no judging <laughs> <laughs> now i have a feeling at this point people have been listening long enough that uh yeah oh my god so anyway so i um moved into a different apartment and so when i moved everything out i put half of it in my apartment and i put the other half in my office because I, I was underutilizing the space here. And so I just carefully camouflaged it behind a shelving unit. And, <laughs> and um, so when Sarah Lee um, agreed to rent the room, I just said, hey, I'll just reconfigure the space. I'll work out of that space and I'll move all the stuff home. And in the Meantime, I've gone through a bunch of boxes, dozens and dozens of them. So there, it isn't as much shit as it, there was. Um, but now, now my I have extra boxes and in my storage, and I've been going through stuff, including this adorable top. I don't know if anybody can see it. Um, I wear a lot of t-shirts. Do you wear t-shirts a lot? Mm -hmm. I freaking live in t-shirts. Yep. 
Um, yeah. T-shirts and then I have sweaters just to throw over them. Got it. Yeah. Well, because everything I do is really physical and I get hot. And so they not only T-shirts, but they have to be cotton. <laughs> yes. And even in the yes. winter, I wear short sleeves because mm-hmm. I just get so hot. I can't. <sighs> yep. Um, so I have found a few gems, tchotchkes, bloody hell. I have a lot of tchotchkes. <laughs> <laughs> were there any that you were missing? Well, some gems, some okay. gems, some, some lovely things, you know, I've gone in and out uh, with my, um, uh, appreciation of feng shui. And so there are certain remedies that you do when you have feng shui. For example, if you're going to, if you're looking to add um, a love into your life or you're looking to couple up, um, you buy things in pairs, you know, and there are even vessels that you can get that have like two spouts. And um, so there's some of that shit. Um, (laughs) In storage. (laughs) <laughs> and um, not anymore. Some of it is pulled out. Some of it is um, given away. Um, I have a ton of candles. Oh, yeah. My, like smelly candles or just for the ambiance? Smelly kind of candles, some yeah. tea lights, some like, what ceremony was I trying to <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> right. What sting video. Was uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Prepping for with all these candles. <laughs> Bloody of, hell. Uh-huh. Um, uh, some sweet things. You know, I love, I'm a huge DIYer and I love to rehab yeah. old furniture, not refinish. That's for professionals. <laughs> but I will sand down and slap a coat of paint on something to make yeah. it look fresh and new. That's my speed. Um, uh, so I have, um, and you've probably done this with Laura. So I have keepsaked, I turned that into a verb. I've keepsaked <laughs> some of my daughter's artwork and she's got some really good stuff. Like from when she was a kid to when she was in high school oh, yeah. and took art classes. Yeah, like this is, and um, so some stuff I had framed and, um, but now with my new aesthetic, um, and I like to have matchy matchy, I've taken her artwork and I've gotten um, either newer mats or I painted the mats and then I painted the frames so that instead of looking kind of hodgepodge, mis- uh-huh. you know, it all kind of looks yeah. matchy matchy. And so I've created, um, some crafts around some of these little treasures I found, but then I have boxes of patient files from 2008. I mean, that shit can go. Yeah. Um, so why are we yammering on about this? Well, (laughs) in my deep meditation this week, um, and since I've been really focusing on this, um, I wanted to talk about attachments. Mm-hmm. and letting shit go yeah I mean we well we tried to trademark poop bags yeah yes we did you, yeah, I'll do yeah that. that is pause yeah, right. yep yep <laughs> great idea still a great idea it is um possible trademark people <laughs> it's in the work so yeah, yeah. Pending, mm-hmm. or trademark pending um so that's my story of storing yeah. shit and I'm actively working on it. It's a, it's my new part-time job, mm-hmm. but do you have any shit that you're attached to that you haven't let you go know, of or need to let we, go of, want to let yeah. go? Of? Somebody <laughs> so might much. judge you regarding yeah, your- so much. So over the weekend, I don't know if you do this, I'll get into something and I pick it up because it has to go to the other room. Right. And then as I'm passing through that room, I get sidetracked with something else that needs to be done. Never. So I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh -uh. So working this weekend, um, on cleaning off some shelves. And then of course, you know, I'm a little bit slower than usual. And then I get 
super frustrated because I'm moving a little bit slower. But I start looking at like all these extra dishes, like pots and pans that we haven't used. But I thought, oh, these would be good camping pots and pans. Yes. I, you know, I, I, we started in the basement. Then that's when the sidetrack happened that I'm upstairs. David asked for a pan for like a dish to put underneath a pot for, so he could bring some bamboo inside. And time out, like, bamboo. Bamboo. Oh yeah, we have bamboo. We, we, we planted bamboo a few years ago to create a fence, basically a privacy fence on the side of our deck. Okay. And so we've played around. Davis tried for a long time um, with transplanting it. Okay. But just like a little bit of it, because this stuff can grow like 20 feet. It's, it's supposed to be one of the plants that grows the fastest. It's the most amazing thing. I'll try not to get suits to so tight. I tracked. Yes. Um, it grows. It's a grass. I guess it's in the grass family and it grows. I mean, inches a day when it's the season. It's crazy. And it can grow in Ohio. Yeah. Isn't that supposed yeah. to be a tropical plant? You know, I, I always thought so, but I think it's more of a nuisance. Like you really have to, because it grows so fast, uh -huh. you have to plant it and it takes some maintenance because it goes underground mm -hmm. and will shoot up, you know, I don't know, I'm bad with measurements, but you know, 25 feet away from the original bunch. Ooh. A and so luckily when they shoot up, you know, they're about this tall, so they're a little bit taller than the grass. So the lawnmower, you know, keeps them down, okay. but they grow very fast. Okay. So we've messed around with the shoots that pop up way far away, uh -huh. trying to pull a piece up and put it in a pot and see what'll happen. Cause we'd like to maybe put it in different spots. Okay. But we've never been successful. We've got a good one that started this maybe a month or two ago that Dave put in a pot and it actually it's doing something, which is cool. So he wanted to bring it into his office and was asking for a, you know, a dish, a round dish to put underneath mm -hmm. of it. Well, in my head, I'm like, I have the perfect dish then I have to look through it and I have to go through that cabinet that has all that stuff that I'm like, I've been mentally telling myself we need to clean out for mm -hmm. a long time. Okay. I'm just going to do it. Plop down on the floor and started emptying things out. By the time I was done emptying things out, I had a pile of those pots and pans mm -hmm. that I thought would be great for camping that I told Dave, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. He goes, you mean donate? I said, whatever. I don't want to see them. <laughs> now is the time, like just get them out of here now. So he did. It was a couple pots with the lids and everything. And mm. there was one like really old crock pot type cooker, but uh -huh. you know, you only need so many of those and I have probably more than Ooh, you need. I found my crock pot. I was Ooh. very excited. I, Not that I'm doing a lot of, you know, roast or I love, I know. But I love you my know crock what it's pot. good for? What? Corn on the cob. Really? Yeah. Huh. You just put it on. I don't know if it was low or high. You yeah. put this much water. Uh-huh. Right? Because you just need to steam it, right? Yeah. Set it in water. Genius. Yeah. So, so easy to clean up and mm -hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It it's so yeah, we just got into a big, like opening up cabinets and, you know, we just got to get rid of stuff and mm -hmm. I've held, and that's exactly how it goes for me is I'll hold on to something for such a long time. I don't know why, because I'm like, I'm going to use this. And yeah. then it's almost like I flip a switch where I'm like, get it out, get it out now. I don't want to look at it anymore, but I don't know why it takes me so long. Well, it's, it's a stuff you know, there's the, the reward of diminishing returns, you know, and for every situation, it's going to be different. Um, you know, one of the things I say that people might think is weird, like when you get protein powder or something, they have the scoops. Yep. I keep those. I have some. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause some are like a perfect tablespoon and you put it in sugar or flour, or there are some mm -hmm. bigger ones that, um, I use, which is a perfect half cup and I use it for 
Trixie's dog food and and mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a law of diminishing returns that you know if you can find something and use it in a relatively short amount of time and you know or you have storage and something you know that makes sense but um you know what what is our attachment with stuff i i had a storage unit too i kept it for years mm -hmm. and i rarely ever went there i rarely ever had to get anything out so when we moved into this house seven ish years ago mm -hmm. Like, let's clear out the storage unit. And if it's not going to the house, somebody mm -hmm. else can come get it. And it just, but why, why did I pay that fee for so long? Because there was a small part of me that's like, well, what if there's something in there Yeah, that's important? And what mm -hmm. if I just get rid of everything? Mm -hmm. And then I remember where I put that one important thing. I don't know. Right. It's, it's craziness. It doesn't. I well, do you have um, boxes of your skinny clothes? Yes. Yeah. I keep a few key pieces and then I'm like, why? I had these so nice, these dress pants. Mm -hmm. I live in leggings. Yeah. Okay. But I have probably mm, between five and 10 pairs of these nice dress pants mm. that I loved the way they fit. Yeah. Four sizes ago, at least. <laughs> oh. Well, you're tiny as is. Oh, well, uh, yeah, it was, they, they were my skinny days, like a year after Lara was born, that was probably the, the like weight that I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So am I ever going to fit into them again? Or will I ever want to? Probably not, because I like leggings mm -hmm. now, but I still have them. Yes. So I, I have boxes it. and boxes of, now some stuff, like I said, some that you get the gem, but I could definitely yeah. live without this little, little gem. And mm -hmm. um, so yeah do you really need to pay the storage for something that you hope to get into and mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah i don't know why I don't, I don't know why it's just one of those like oh i might need that one day mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna feel bad about getting rid of it but i can't tell you that there's i can't remember an instance there probably has been one or two where i've been like oh my gosh i wish i wouldn't have got rid of that Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Obviously it's not anything that was monumental that I'm like, oh, that one time I got rid of this and I really needed it later. No, mm -hmm. can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, the exception in my universe is, and I, I mentioned it earlier, some of Shanti's artwork. Yes. Like mm -hmm. she has this panorama of the planets that I have, that she made in a box right? And yeah. it's got glitter and it's got all the planets and they're hanging from pieces <gasps> of yarn. Ooh, okay. and, then, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've traveled with it for 12 years and it's inside of a plastic box so it wouldn't get crushed. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and it's just endearing and I just want to keep it. And so, you know, there's a few things like that, her, her mm -hmm. special um, basketball things. And, you know, in some cases, I'm a bit of an archivist. Um, and then in some cases, I'm just unconscious. And in some cases, yeah. hoard, I'm going to call myself hoarder adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> That's it. To date, I have found no dead animals or. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? That's a good. Yep. Yep. When that happens, you know, you've gone overboard. <laughs> oh, that's No stacks of newspapers. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so, you know, there was a purpose for everything or it mm -hmm. made sense at the time. Yes. Um, uh, and there are some treasures and I do have a collection of plastic boxes. And so there'll be label and organize and things so it'll be keep trash giveaway mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. those, do we need another column keep trash giveaway no probably not because then it oh. just goes back yeah or so <gasps> yes. yes yes so you know things are a little tight so um yeah I'd like to not lean into the whole inflation 
argument because with any economic downturn or in times of good time, you know, there are more millionaires made during economic downturns than any other. Um, during the whole pandemic, I was telling people, myself included, we'll just find a need and fill it. Right. So people that were making masks, people that were setting up um, uh, testing sites. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, a lot of people came out with a lot of ingenuity. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we're talking on Zoom. Yeah. Yep. You know, find a need and fill it. Um, I wrote two books. Um, mm -hmm. we're gonna, I'm going to try to get them to the publisher, the one today. Um, okay. So, yeah. So if things are a little tight, this would be an opportunity to look through some of your stuff. Mm -hmm and see what you can sell. In my neighborhood, we have next door, mm -hmm. which is catch as catch can. They'll get free stuff, but it's harder to sell stuff. Um, right. Whereas offer up that app um, or eBay, you can sell yeah. stuff. You know, it's, and again, it's a law of diminishing returns. If you're gonna get enough for it that it makes it worth your time, Right. God bless. Otherwise, just let it go and know that whatever you need, the universe is going to mm -hmm. fill. Mm -hmm. um, so let's do that. Let's do, let's do a meditation on attachments. Yeah. Hypnosis on attachments, releasing attachments, having healthy attachments, letting shit go, but also side with a side of of attracting abundance, attracting prosperity, irrespective yeah. of what you're hearing on the news. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we can all energetically rise above. Well, you How know, and then you say that you had kind of noticed that by emptying things out, clearing things out, you're busy. It's like you're inviting Dude. things in. Yes. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for reminding. I like the instant I had moved all the, the the boxes out of my office, even though I was making room for somebody else. I was like, oh, now I'm going to get busy. And my practice last week is you. Yeah. Can, well, you saw it. I did. Um, yeah. That's I was like slammed. I was slammed. I was so busy. I mean, like, oh. And all it took was moving some shit. Yeah. Get rid of stuff. Yep. Yeah, and, let's do it. Um, um, yeah, you're right. Let's let's play on that. Let's <laughs> expand on that. Everybody ready? Everybody ready to move some stuff? This was a long chat, so thanks for hanging in with us. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll tell point. you where you can fast forward in the show notes, guys. <laughs> always, always. We'll have it in the show notes. We may even let you know how to get in contact with us if you want mm -hmm. us to chat about something that interests you the listening audience. So in the meantime, find yourself in a comfortable place. Comfortable, comfortable. I'm in my comfortable and squeaky chair. Yes. Yes. I'm in my rocker. Is that what that is? Yeah. This was my mom's, my mom's rocker that she rocked us all when we were babies. So I rocked oh. Laura in it. And uh, this is one of those things that I'm not getting rid of. No? <laughs> and it just got moved to my office. Yeah. There you it's go. So nice. There you Let's go. And I love your Navy wall. Mm That's -hmm. <laughs> all right. I'm so, settled in. Oh um, yeah. Okay. So um, find yourself in a comfortable place and I will do my best to say fewers, you knows, so's and ums. <laughs> So every, <laughs> there you go. Everyone, please find a comfortable place to sit. And if you aren't already, be amused. Let's have fun with this. Let's have fun. Let's set the tone at amusement while we're releasing attachment. Releasing attachment to stuff. We can release attachment to 
ideas, people. But today we're mostly focusing on releasing our attachment to goods, stuff. And in so doing, we are setting ourselves up to attract abundance. Not abundance of crap, but abundance of prosperity, abundance of things that we can use, things that will better our lives, our health, our families, our communities. And we can let it be easy. So take a deep breath. Let's just get here. Get here, get here. And as you find yourself in your comfortable place, draw your attention to the chair that you're sitting in, or if you're lying down. And notice how that chair or the, wherever you're laying or lying. Notice how it supports your physical body. And allow it to support you. Allow wherever you are to help you feel supported. Take that in, breathe that in, the concept of being supported. And in the next breath, bring your attention to your arms and legs. and allow them to become heavy. You may even say in your mind's eye, my arms and legs are heavy. My arms and legs are heavy. And allow your heavy arms and heavy legs to create relaxation in your body, allowing you to sink comfortably in your chair, allowing waves of relaxation to course through your body comfortably, easily, smoothly, and let it feel good. My arms and legs are heavy. My arms and legs are heavy. And let that relaxation course through your body comfortably, comfortably, taking you deeper down, deeper down into a state of relaxation. And when we count backwards from five to one, you can easily go deeper down deeper down and deeper down into this area known as your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind has all your tools, all your gifts. It's always there to protect you and will always tell you the truth. Subconscious mind is that area where we leapfrog over the critical factor or the analyzer it says, wait, what? Go to that safe place. So as you sink into the chair, feeling comfortable, feeling supported with every breath, gonna go deeper down and deeper down into this state of relaxation, five, 
doubling that sense of relaxation. Four, deeper down, deeper down, deeper down. Three, doubling that sense of relaxation, comfort, enjoyment, support, sinking deeper, deeper, deeper. Two, as much as 10 times more relaxed, deeper down, deeper down, deeper down. And one, all the way down into this deep relaxed place, this comfortable place, feeling safe, supported, comfortable, relaxed. And in your mind's eye, put your attention as a point of light behind your eyes and in between your temples. So even in this deep relaxed space, you can be in the center of your head. With your eyes closed, it's as if you're looking out from behind your eyes. And in this deep relaxed state, create your bubble, your energy field, your personal space, your aura around you in every direction, approximately three feet over your head to either side, front and back, over your head and under your knees, under your feet. Create a tube of light that goes from the base of your spine, through your chair or where you're lying, through the floor or all the floors where you're sitting, through all the layers of the earth and into the center of the earth. Center of the earth we're going to imagine is a lawn or a meadow. And see that grounding cord, that tube of light, drive into the center of the earth. We'll imagine that the center of the earth is neutral. And as you ground into the center of the earth, you feel grounded, tethered, even more safe, relaxed, comfortable. And in your mind's eye, remember a time when you felt perfectly safe, perfectly supported, perfectly comforted. And if you can't remember a time, imagine a time when you felt perfectly safe. In that time and place, see what you saw. Were you inside or outside? Were you alone or with people? Was it daytime or nighttime? See what you saw. Who were you with? What did you see? Hear what you might have heard in that safe place. Again, were you inside or outside? Were you alone or with people? Was there talking? Sounds of nature? Sounds of industry? Sounds inside a home or office? And in that safe place, hear what you might have heard. See what you might have seen. Smell what you might have smelled. Again, you're inside or outside, alone or with people, daytime or nighttime. What was the setting of this safe place? What smells? What might you have tasted in this safe place? And what did you feel? Were you alone? 
with people inside or outside? Was it daytime or nighttime? Were you wearing a coat? Or was it a sunny day? You felt the skin, felt the sun on your skin. Bring all your senses into play in this safe place and be there now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, taste what you tasted, feel what you felt. Bring all of your senses in, hear what you heard. And again, if you can't remember a place, imagine a place and fill it in with all the rich details. But most importantly, that sensation, that concept of feeling safe, perfectly safe. And allow that sense of safety to course through your body. And know that you can recreate this sense of safety anytime, any place, anywhere by simply closing your eyes and imagining your safe place. You can even say in your mind's eye, my safe place and be there. And it can be easy. So allow that sense of safety to wash over you. Feel comfortable, feel natural. And allow yourself to relax into that sense of safety. That beautiful God-given right to feel safe. And know that your grounding cord helps you feel safe. Acknowledging your bubble helps you feel safe. Being in the center of your head helps you feel safe because it gives you a sense of neutrality. You can look at things, your life, your situations from behind your eyes and in between your temples as if you're looking at the world from behind your eyes. So in this safe place, in the center of your head, in your bubble, grounded, and in present time. Imagine on the outside of your bubble that you have a reading screen, a television screen, or a video screen. And on this video screen, when you turn it on, allow it to show you something or some place that you have stuff that you would like to let go of. Maybe it's a room that has become disorganized, or maybe it's a storage that you've been paying for for years like yours truly with stuff that you'll never use again don't need. Or maybe it's a cabinet. Doesn't really matter. Just see it on your reading screen. And look at it from the center of your head. Look at your stuff. And as you look at your stuff, give it a color. Imagine that it's any color but white or black. And choose the first impression, the first color that pops in your head. So look at your stuff, your boxes, or that space that needs to be cleaned, or that place that needs to be tidied. 
or that stuff that you need to give away or sell and give it a color. And let this color be a color that you find displeasing, that you find ugly, that you find coarse to your eyes, offensive. And as you look at your stuff and you see it painted, this horrible color, in this safe place. See if you look at your stuff with the same appreciation. Or see if maybe it's a little easier to move it. And as you look at that space of stuff, clutter, You've given it a color that you don't like. In your mind's eye, anything that you are ready to let go of, imagine that it just magically disappears off of your reading screen. And you might not even know what it is. You might not even know what's in that box. It's okay for this exercise. Because what you're doing is you're letting spirit take the lead and just let that shit go. So whatever you're ready to let go of, see it on your reading screen and just see those items, that clutter, those things, even a concept, just disappear. See it move. And maybe it's one thing, maybe it's half of those things. Maybe it's all of it. Whatever feels right for you in this moment, without attachment, it's just information on your reading screen. And it's kind of like looking when you're getting ready to take out the trash. You don't have to sift through every piece to put it in the dumpster. Or maybe it's just one small thing. And on that reading screen, see if that color hasn't changed. Maybe it's the same color that you find horrible Maybe you want to sit here for a bit longer and move some stuff. Maybe you want to take this up tomorrow, do it again. Take a look at that reading screen and see if what's left is that same icky color. Or see if that has shifted too. Maybe yes, maybe no. But in this quiet, safe space, as you're metaphorically and energetically releasing the attachment to things that are expired, no longer needed, unuseful, taking up space, As you see them disappear off your reading screen, take a look at how you feel in your physical body. See if you don't feel lighter 
as a result of letting some shit go. And in this quiet place, in this safe place with your eyes closed, in the center of your head, in this deep, deep, relaxed place, looking at your reading screen with however much stuff is on or not, whatever has disappeared. Take a look at your reading screen and see what has filled that space. Might be another color. Maybe the space has shrunk. Maybe you're noticing other energies that you couldn't see because of the clutter. Maybe there's some prosperity in there. Perhaps some freedom, perhaps some joy. What would you like instead of the clutter? Maybe you'd like some prosperity. Maybe you'd like some healing in your physical body. Maybe you'd like some new stuff. Maybe like space, time, freedom. What will you save? What will you gather? What do you get now that you've let some stuff go? And let it be easy. Let it be fun. Maybe you have the freedom to take a trip. Maybe you have the freedom to have a little bonus, a little less stress. Maybe your paycheck goes a little farther. If you sold some stuff, what are you gonna do? You gonna pay down some debt? You gonna reward yourself with something awesome? You gonna sock it away in rainy day fund? What are you gonna do when you're free from this stuff? Look at those possibilities those choices. Allow yourself to feel lighter, hopeful, prosperous. And notice that it can be easy. So when you're ready, if you've moved or allowed to disappear everything off your reading screen that you're ready to let go of, go ahead and allow that reading screen to also disappear. Be in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble, in this deep relaxed state, allowing yourself to feel lighter. Proud of yourself for being courageous enough to even look at your stuff. Look at the clutter. Look at things that you're ready to be relieved of. Give yourself credit for doing this meditation. Give yourself credit for giving yourself this healing. The first step in any forward progress is the consideration 
that you can make forward progress. And you've done that today, beautifully, wonderfully, magically. In your mind's eye, in this deep relaxed state, in the center of your head grounded in your bubble, I'd like you to imagine that you are on top of a mountain. If you've never been on top of a mountain, just imagine. You're at the very peak. And you can look around in all directions. You can see far and wide, the sky above, the earth below. And on this peak, on this mountain peak, allow yourself to feel a profound interconnectedness with everything you can see, the sky above, the earth below, knowing that whatever created the sky, the moon, the stars, the earth, the oceans, and all its inhabitants is the same energy that created you. And just by this very notion, you are connected with all things. And as you stand on that mountaintop, you are raising your vibration to appreciate this profound interconnectedness with all things, with all people, with all creatures. And allow that to feel good. Allow that to feel light. Allow that to feel profound. And allow that to heal whatever needs to be healed. Physical body, your emotional body, spiritual body, mental body. knowing that you are connected with all things. You are created from the same wonderful power that creates everything. Take that in. Breathe it in. Know it in your physical body. And from this place on high, as you see the world around you, allow yourself to see the immense possibilities. There is no lack. There is no lack. There is abundance. All you have to do is dial into it. Allow that abundance to swirl and gather in your space. Invite it in. Invite that prosperity, that healing, that levity, whatever you need, it's out there. The universe is vast and abundant. It's just as easy for you to match that vibration as it is to create a room full of stuff. In fact, it's easier. So as you look around you in 360 degrees, taking it in, breathing it in, being one with the universe, feeling light and healthy in your physical body, feeling joyous and amused. You might even laugh out loud because it feels so good. And allow that to sink in, just breathe it into your very essence. And know that as you let shit go, you untether yourself and you're able to expand, expand your awareness, expand your havingness, 
expand your possibilities and connection thereof. And it's easy. So take another breath, taking in that essence, that idea of all that is you're entitled to. Breathe it in, take it in, in this safe, relaxed space. And in a moment, not just yet, we're going to count up from one to five, and you're going to take this healing with you, knowing that this is a permanent change, and you are forever renewed, enthusiastic, ready to move some more shit, and it's going to be easy. One, wiggling your fingers and toes. Two, you might shift in your chair. Three, coming back into the room. Four, five, eyes open, wake up. Here you are, feeling great. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Oh, hello. Hey, girl. <laughs> ah it every week but I just feel so good <laughs> I love that we play good. together like this I know it's I love it love it I feel so good I feel floaty afterwards so nice feeling I do floaty yeah. is a good word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for someone who's concussed that is a very good word <laughs> right it's a good floaty <laughs> oh well, thank well, wishing you wishing so all of our much. listeners some floatiness Thank you yes. very much. I'm Dr. Cynthia. I'm Kaylin. And this is Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast. You can reach us at intuitive.hypno.doc at gmail.com. It'll be available in the show notes. Thank you very Definitely. much for listening. Have a wonderful day. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. <laughs>